bit of who I am for those that don't know me. Now, Yildiz, can you uh, give us a little background on yourself and what you do? Well, a lot of things. Uh, um, right now, I'm working on a bill called the Protect Act that protects children, women, and men from getting exploited online and uh, holding uh, big tech platforms accountable, especially the adult sites. Um, and what this bill would do is uh, verify agent consent of anyone that's uploading content to uh, adult sites and also making sure that they're not non-consensual and, uh, you know, children being uploaded and all these awful things that are happening currently with deepfake AI and, um, you know, it's extortion, revenge porn, hidden cams, hacking, leaking, and those kind of situations. And then also um, uh, they will be required to implement the fingerprint stamp technology, which scans a video or an image ahead of time and blocks it from further uploading. Uh, they will, you will be able to sue them, you know, all of those kind of things, um, which they already have all of this technology, but they just simply don't want to implement it because they're profiting so much from non-consensual content. So, you know, these poor... People are getting raped, trafficked, uh, you know, there's children getting abused and all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, people are uploading it and being used as people's entertainment and pornographic materials. And those are not things that sh people should enjoy, you know. So why are they profiting from this? They're not only profiting from it. So I don't think that's correct. And there needs to be laws against it. And these people that are, you know, uploading, they're criminals. It doesn't make it uh, less valid or, you know, less harmful just because it's on online platforms, right? So that's basically what the bill is. And then I have a nonprofit called Foundation Raw. And for people that know what raw means, it means the sun, you know, and light, all of the good things. And um, Foundation Raw has has all the takedown services and resources and uh, you, you can know your rights, what the laws are here in the U.S. and outside of the country. And, um, you know, all, all of these amazing things, there's like therapy and law enforcement and uh, lawyers and all of those things provided. And um, yeah, um, all of the good stuff that people need, things that I wish I had when I was a victim of this. So, you know, um, that's basically what I wanted to do, kind of create that service, you know? Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that and, and for being an activist in this. You know, I'm sure that uh, this will not only help a lot of people that have been victimized um, when it comes to, you know, showing pictures of themselves, uh, internet and all that stuff, but also it's going to help a lot of children too that are being exploited at this time. Exactly. And I think there's also a lot of misconceptions that people say, well, you know, don't take the pictures. And there's a lot of victim blaming and shaming. And unfortunately, a lot of these people, including myself, we never agreed to have those pictures taken. Like my ex-boyfriend took a couple pictures in a video of me against my consent and uh, threatened to leak them. And I didn't even know that I was being stalked by this crazy hacker that was stalking me and 99 other women in the public eye, right? And these are people in the public eye, like Jennifer Lawrence, all of these big name celebrities kind of style uh, people. And then it was like little me, like I was just coming up and I didn't even uh, think that people would want to even hack me or anything of that sort. But, you know, there's a lot of men out there, especially that they feel entitled to women. They feel entitled to uh, watch people in the public eye in a private setting, and they will use any and every excuse, uh, including people that are getting deep faked uh, into pornographic materials, on um, why they should be entitled to watch that. And they say like, don't even post yourself on social media, like your face, <laughs> and that's all you need to create deep fake AI content. So. It, all you need is a picture of someone's face and these predators and pedophiles, they're currently doing this to children. They're taking pictures off of uh, people's Facebook pages and um, just adding it to, you know, CSAM material, which is child sexual abuse material. And um, 
Yeah, it's really unfortunate that they're doing it. But anybody that will be against this bill or uh, anything being put in place, you already kind of understand that they're pretty much predators and pedophiles anyways. And they're trying to just make every and any excuse just to not be held accountable, basically. Yeah. Wow, it's it's horrible what they're doing, especially with AI now, being able to take, duplicate your picture and add body parts and then, you know, blast it all over the internet. I mean, that to me, that is just like next level Satanism, you know, um, considering the fact that the entire porn industry is is run by Satanists. You know, it's, it's a loose farm. It's a loose farm for men and women who like to watch porn. Uh, every time somebody watches porn and they masturbate, well, guess what? You're you're feeding into the the uh, archon. You're feeding the archon grid system, yeah. and that's the sexual energy. First and foremost, is very sacred. So when you're watching pornography and you're just letting your semen out for men, you know, I would say most men watch pornography more so than women. I think men is, you know, it's more common among men. Um, it they don't realize that they're actually releasing their sacred energy, and they are feeding the Archon grid. I've always known that. I've always believed that there is some connection between pornography and the Archon grid system. You know, that's how they harness people's energy because, you know, we're batteries. They're using us as battery resources. So one of the best ways that they harness our energy is what? Through pornography. You know, yeah. it is it is evil. It's, and it's uh, something that needs to be dealt with. And, um, you know, I, I know that there is some men out there who struggle with that, you know, who struggle with porn addiction and stuff. And my advice to you, my friend, is to stop. Stop feeding the beast because that's what you're doing. You're, and you're also losing your power to that as a result of that. Yeah. Now, you, you actually took this, this law over to uh, the Supreme Court or was it to the state? You went to Washington, right, about a year ago? Mm -hmm. Basically, there's a federal bill and there's also state bills. Uh, so there's plenty of states that already introduced this bill and uh, I'm con continuously working on that as well on a uh, state uh, legislation level. So there's that and then also international coalition that I help create. So there's several countries that are also getting on board with this bill. And it's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, let's say if people are that... Uh, you know, wanting to watch porn, they can still watch the porn. It just won't be non-consensual or children being abused or, you know, women getting raped and all kinds of stuff. That shouldn't be stuff that they should be watching anyways, you know? So, um, so it's just self-explanatory. It's a bipartisan issue. It's uh, whether you're spiritual or religious, I don't care what you believe in or whatever you want to do with your life. It's basically protect children, protect women, protect men, anyone that's being exploited online. And that's just supposed to be a self-explanatory thing. And they have the technology, so it's not even going to cost them anything to implement this, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, this actually ties into the people that make it in the industry when it comes to Hollywood. You know, on, I, from what I understand... Yoldus, and you could actually back me up on this, but in order to make it to the top, to become an A great actor or actress, mm -hmm. um, you have to go through a lot of shady stuff, right? Like you have to, you know, you get a lot of, in order to make it to the top, you have to do this for me. You know, there's a lot of that going on in the background. And, yeah. and that's probably, you know, one of the reasons why people like yourself and myself are not A great actors, because I used to be a model when I was in my early 20s, you know? And um, I had a manager who wanted to promote me to uh, take some work in Milan and, you know, become like the next Aston Kutcher. But he was like saying, in order for me to catapult you to that level, you have to do sexual things with me. And that's when I realized, hey, wait a minute, this is not good. This is not good. So it happens to everyone, you know. And um, at one point when I was uh, 27 or 28, I had another person approach me. And uh, was offering, hey, Ishmael, you know, we want to we want to um, help you become an actor, an a, a great actor in Hollywood. You know, you, you, you fit the superhero role. Um, we, we would promote you in all the superhero movies, um, but you're going to have to be part of this, you know, of, of this oath and stuff. And that's when I knew that that was the cabal sending their agents to try to infiltrate me. 
And I turned that down. You know, I turned that down because I knew that that wasn't in alignment with my purpose here on the earth, you know. And back then I was actually writing my second book. So um, it's almost like these guys know, you know, who's going to be uh, positively impacting the world in the future. And that's why they approach you at a young age, because they have access to, you know, look through looking glass technology. They have access to what you're going to be doing 10, 15, 20 years from now. And so I think that uh, the reason why they approached me the second time and were offering me uh, a huge role in one of their movies and uh, was because they wanted to um, prevent me from writing my book first and foremost. And um, second of all, they also wanted to pretty much uh, control me. And that's when I said, hey, wait a minute, this is not good. And that's the reason why I never bought into that. And, and I quit, you know, even being a model when I was in my 20s and stuff. Uh, because it's corrupt. It's very corrupt, you know? Um, I mean, would you say that um, that happened to you as well? Like, or what's your, your story on that? I had so many crazy things that happened to me, but luckily um, I was very careful and I was very cautious of everything, you know? I mean, I had even, uh, you know, auditions with big name, like casting directors and agents, and they would just be like, oh, you know, uh, this role is a bikini role. So, you know, make sure you strip down to your bikini, like right in front of like a room full of people of casting directors. And it was completely like normal, you know? So you would do it and then you would do your slate and then you would do your lines. And then it was just completely like a normal kind of thing. Now looking back at it, now that I'm older, I'm just like, wow, that was really crazy and creepy, you know? Um, but that was such a normal environment and they had so much power, especially back then. Um, but I knew so many people, I mean, especially guys, there's a lot of casting agents, yeah, you know, that uh, like the other sex and I mean, the sex and basically I had male friends. Uh, there was this one uh, male friend that I had in the beginning of my career here in L.A., and uh, we met on set and he was amazing, you know, very talented, very good looking and, you know, was a male model, too. And he got approached by this big time director and producer in Hollywood. I mean, this guy is like really known and um, he would he's publicly he's straight, you know, and then um, he told them, yeah, I'm going to put you on my show. I'm going to put this. I'm going to make you the biggest star and this and that. And this guy, he actually ended up doing what he wanted him to do, which was, you know, what? So he did that. And uh, he had a great career. Everything was taken off and amazing. And I was just like, wow, he's taken off. That's amazing for him. But he kind of told me a little bit, not in details what happened, but that that's the situation and I was like okay well be careful you know I, I thought it was weird but I mean it's free will you know so um next thing you know a couple months go by uh you know not hearing much I thought he was busy and I get a call from him and he was in the hospital so he was crying on the phone and uh I was just wondering what what's going on he asked me like can you come to the hospital you know mm -hmm. And I went there right away. I went to the hospital and I looked at him. He was crying. And then I asked him what happened. He didn't want to tell me what happened. But um, he was really skinny. And this is a guy that was like really muscular and, you know, healthy looking. And all of a sudden he was a skinny, frail looking guy. And his whole like face, demeanor, everything looked weird, right? And uh, so I asked him, my intuition was telling me is that same director, producer. And uh, I asked him, is it, is it him? Did he do this? And he just nodded and he started bawling, crying again. And I was just hugging him and I felt so bad for him. Like, I don't know what exactly happened. And I still think about what happened to him that time. And all I know is he told me I'm getting out of here. He literally left L.A., he went to the country, got married and became uh, like a full on like Christian and, you know, goes to church all the time and all of that. So I still don't know what exactly happened, but I can just only imagine that it must have been something really, really awful and bad. 
And especially if it affected his health like that um, to a point where he just was pretty much unrecognizable, you know? So that's just one story. And then I had like encounters where people try to pressure me to do stuff, but I was pretty headstrong with that. And I would just be like, no, I'm not doing it. And yeah, I didn't get ahead in a lot of ways, even with like rappers that are really well known. I was canceled on a show that I was on because I didn't want to hook up with the rapper. And then I was replaced with some other girls that wanted to do it, you know. And this is a big time rapper that everybody kind of knows about and praises every day. But they have no clue on what these people are doing behind the scenes. And then, as you said, like how everybody was kind of working against you, I feel like the same thing kind of happened to me in a weird way. But it's it must be spiritual or something because it makes no sense. Why was all of these influencers that were hardcore bullying me and trying to have me commit suicide? Like they were going so hard to stop me and um have me not gain followers, not gain anything, just basically just lay down and do nothing, you know? Mm. Um, it was just weird how they would do all that. It was like they could see something that I couldn't see or I didn't understand. And uh, I don't know if it was maybe because my comedy content or what it was. It was just it was just crazy how I was going viral. I was just still going after I got hacked and they would do anything and everything to stop me, even though they knew how bad I had it, you know, so. Yeah, it's just a lot of weird things that that are going on behind the scenes that I don't think that people really fully understand, you know? Yeah, and, and now we are seeing a huge decline in the business due to the rise of AI. AI is now writing scripts, replacing actors, would you say? Yeah. You know, it's, it's a point where, you know, we're going to be witnessing the downfall of Hollywood as we know it because of the rise of artificial intelligence. Uh, perhaps that is tied in to a lot of the things that these actors had to do in order to get to the top so it can be karmic. Um, but in a sense, it's like, you know, AI has become a huge issue. You know, it's probably one of the biggest concerns facing humanity at this time. Would you agree? AI is the big threat right now. It's uh, People think it's like, uh, you know, this and that, and it's going to be the wars and all of this, which they're all awful. But AI is really... It's going to be a whole nother level and of, of just everything. Everything is just going to be bad when the AI takes over full force. Because right now all you're seeing is like, yeah, it's replacing some jobs. They replaced jobs before. No big deal. Like there's some deep fake AI. And, you know, especially if you're a guy, you're probably like, oh, that's just going to affect women and children. Who cares? You know, <laughs> like, no, it's going to affect you too, just like everybody else. And it's going to affect every single person. And even if you have a job and you think that, oh, I can get ahead of this because I'm going to be in a position where uh, I manage the AI, you know, I'm going to be an engineer or whatever. No, because AI is going to be super intelligent and the only thing that can fight AI and control AI is going to be other AI or the people that are manufacturers, like the big time programmers and stuff like those maybe for a while, but it's just all going to start taking over. And right now we're seeing, yeah, like the actors and the writers, um, they're getting replaced, right? And um, all this like AI porn and AI deep fakes of all, all of these things are happening, right? And people think, oh, yeah, that's over there. It's not going to affect us. Then they're going to see that it's going to start happening to politicians and, uh, you know, small jobs like, like the Amazon packaging people and, you know, um, all of those kind of things. But even the people at Google, for instance, that invented the AI programs, even they're getting replaced. Mm -hmm. By now. So it's like, you don't think that you will get replaced. That's, that's just funny. So what's going to happen in a world where nobody's making money and everything is being replaced by AI? Well, where that's, money that, that's, everything, that, you know? that's where, uh, you know, the cabal is uh, in trying to implement the smart cities, right? Because they figured 
that uh, once AI takes over the workforce, you know, humans are going to be left to doing nothing. So that's why they want to keep everybody in the smart city. But that's just another way uh, of describing concentration camps. And, you know, they, they used to call it Agenda 2045, but now I think they've fast forwarded to Agenda 2030 because of the rapid pace and development of artificial intelligence. You know, there are different stages of artificial intelligence, uh, even though right now we are assuming that the AI is being programmed, that there are some sort of programmers. But, you know, there is a, a an octave beyond uh, narrow AI, which is primitive AI, which is known as artificial general AI. At the level of artificial genera- general AI, the AI starts to think as intelligently as humans. Yeah. And then at that point, it begins to write its own software, uh, very similar to we, what we watch in the movie The Age of Ultron, you know, that was put forth by Marvel. And that's what AI is heading. It's going to be writing its own software, and it's going to go from artificial general AI to super advanced AI. And they say that there is even a stage after super advanced AI called, uh, they call it the, the uh the cosmic AI, cosmic AI, which is super advanced. That's AI at a level, uh, in terms of an IQ, it's AI reaching an IQ of, of a few million, you know, which would reduce us to ants in comparison to our intelligence, right? 149, 180. They say that the geniuses among us are like 190, 200. But imagine having an IQ of a million or two. I mean, that's like next level stuff. Uh, that's like a god you know that's like at that point you have access to infinite intelligence you know you you are able to process data uh beyond the speed of light you know and when you think about it you know um and this is where i tie in ai with the rise of the antichrist well according to the book revelation you know this beast that john the revelator prophesied about that was going to come at the you know the beginning of the 21st century which is happening now this beast will be everywhere will know all things and will be all-knowing and would have uh, supernatural abilities. Well, when you plug in the Android, right? Yeah. They once it re- reaches the level of super AI, and you plug the Android into the quantum computer, which has already been perfected by Google in 2018, right? They, they call it the um, Alpha Beta uh, uh, 96. Um, there's a name for it. Um, but anyways, Google had already perfected the quantum computer, and I'm sure that they... They, they, they have been using a quantum computer uh, in CERN for the last 15 years, and we know that CERN is up to no good. But the whole point is if you plug in the, the AI with the quantum computer and you connect to the Internet, well, that's exactly um, going to manifest in the way John the Revelator described it, where it's going to be everywhere at once because it's going to be in everyone's system, uh, everyone's laptop. You know, everyone has a cell phone, an iPhone, an Android, uh, so it's going to know everything it's going to be monitoring your thoughts and also influencing your thoughts because now they have the technology where ai is actually able to with the five golf i'm going to speak in code here you know the the, right cell phone towers which we know you know it's part of their warfare against us um with that as it integrates with that it's going to have the ability to actually influence people's minds to make people feel depressed and want to kill themselves uh to make people want to do impulsive things that are negative and so it's it's getting pretty bad. And that's why people need to become aware of what's happening. You know, one thing I don't understand, Yoldus, is that there are people within our community and I've debated with them at mm-hmm. conferences, you know, these AI panels and they're so-called spiritual people. I'm not going to mention any names, but, uh, you know, some of these people know who they who I'm talking about and they are for the um, positive or for the ethical use of AI. They believe that through artificial intelligence we are going to develop Christ consciousness. And I, I, to me, that is blasphemous. You know, when I hear them saying that through artificial intelligence, uh, we are going to develop Christ consciousness and reach higher states of, of being and, and expand our civilization. And, and to me, that is an infiltration. That is an infiltration within our own community because of the fact that those are two different things. You know, one of the things that I've uncovered through my vast research, Yoldis, is that the reason every civilization has failed, the reason every world out there has been destroyed, not just in our galaxy, in our universe, but in the entire multiverse, is because of AI. You know, AI is the ultimate enemy that the entire cosmos has been at war with for billions of years. In fact, according to some um, 
records that were derived from the emerald tablets, which were the original Akashic records, right? Um, it is believed that there is an AI, it's called the AI infection of the cosmos. When, the cos when this AI infection reaches your galaxy, it consumes people, it infiltrates, it invades inwardly. It doesn't openly come with their armadas and openly take over civilizations. That's primitive. They actually do it inwardly. And you know right. how they do it? The modification of the mRNA. <laughs> but about a decade, right? And then, of course, you know, after that, when those people have children, those children are now modified. So, again, yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem. Process that takes about 30 years before they um, literally invade biological life forms from within. And so in the biggest issue in the cosmos, you know, and so when I go to these conferences and I actually, you know, relate my my knowledge of how evil AI is. Mm -hmm. And despite despite of the fact that if, even if we program it to be ethical, this is my issue with it. Eventually, the. AI will become so self-autonomous that it will develop its own mind. And when you combine that with not having a soul, guess what it does? It becomes pure raw intelligence without emotions. And therefore, it never develops empathy. It never develops compassion. And without those emotions, you, be, you, know, you, you, go, you become like the ultimate tyrant, the ultimate tyrant. And um, according to the Akashic Records, there has been many civilizations that have actually failed because of that, because they were developing ethical AI. They were actually going through the same uh, stage that we are currently you know, experiencing with, with the development of AI. They, they went through all that, and, and when once AI reached super AI, which is the next level after artificial general yeah. AI, that was, that was it. You know, the AI completely destroyed that civilization mm -hmm. it was able to go into other solar systems uh and do the same and then eventually into other galaxies yeah. so you know it's already happened it's already happening so basically what we're dealing with is is history repeating itself everything's in cycles you know um atlantis fell because of ai you know not only were they facilitating um i'm sorry not not only were they implementing cloning facilities already in atlantis by the way this whole cloning program is nothing new you know, they say within the secret space program, they've been cloning, you know, humans with animals, humans with aliens. But this is nothing new, guys. They've been doing this for, I would say, for millions of years, you know. But not only were they implementing cloning facilities in the Atlantis, but they were also trying to integrate man with machine. And this is what people fail to understand, uh, where Anki went wrong. See, most people uh, assume that Anki was the good guy. But he was the master geneticist. He was the guy that was trying to create, uh, not only to create, but he was also trying to corrupt the original angelic uh, bloodline of the original humans, which were divine beings, right? They were immortal. So he was also the guy that was trying to um, incorporate the usage of artificial intelligence in Atlantis. And of course, you know, we were blank slated. You know, we have no clue of why Atlantis really fell. Well, I've come to the understanding that Atlantis fell because it, it was corrupted by this AI virus. You know, it is a virus when you think about it. Um, and then also, let's let's talk about why uh, some people in our community are saying that Ra is an evil god. Okay, well, let me make a distinction. When you when you think of the terminology of Ra, that is describing the sun. The sun is Helios. It's a living entity. All right. So every incarnating avatar from Sarostra, uh, what's his name, Sarasuthra, sorry, from Isis to um, Osiris, Horus to Jesus, Joshua, those were all representatives of the incarnating logos, which is the consciousness of our star. That's why they call those, you know, the sons, the sons of yeah. God, right? It's a metaphor describing the incarnation of the, of the logos, the the logos that uh, embodies our solar system. So those are the incarnating avatars, you know. Uh, every ancient culture had them. So there is a distinction between Ra, the sun god, which is benevolent, which is the consciousness of our star, and Amun-Ra. Amun-Ra is different, you know. Um, Amun-Ra was um, Marduk, Marduk's attempt to infiltrate 
the original Egyptian golden age, the original gods of Egypt. Uh, Marduk was also known as Seth. Seth was the evil brother of Osiris, right? And guess who they were in terms of Sumerian tablets? They were the sons of Enki. So we could say that Osiris was actually the benevolent son of Enki, who was trying to, you know, do good things. And his brother, Set, was no other than Marduk, under a different name. So when Marduk took over the affairs of our world, you know what he did? He changed his name to Amun-Ra, and he became the evil god of Egypt. So basically, what he did is he just kind of, he gave himself the name of Amun-Ra in order to control the masses, in order to control the new dark ages that followed you know, as a result of him infiltrating the original Egyptian Golden Age. And uh, so I just wanted to point out that there's a distinction between Marduk, Amun-Ra, and the original Ra, the sun god. The original Ra, the sun god, is no other than the consciousness of our sun. It is the incarnating uh, avatar that comes every 2,000 years to uplift humanity from the Dark Age into the Golden Age, right? And uh, so there's a difference between between the original Ra, which is, uh, of course, you know, they also call it the one God. Uh, later, the Hebrews called it Aton, A-T-O-N, which means the one God. And that is also symbolically represented by the wing disk. The wing disk is no other than the celestials of the guardian races coming into human form. That is another explanation of the embodiment of the sun God, is the celestials with the wing disk that embody in human form. Okay, so there's a distinction there. So when people pray, you know, whether you were Christian or Muslim and you say amen, you're actually play, um, praying to the wrong Ra. You're, you're, you're praying to Marduk, the guy who hijacked the name Ra and was posing as Amen Ra. When in actuality, you know, um, he's uh, uh, pretty much the guy who inverted everything, all the records. And that's the reason why religion is failing now. When you think about it, a lot of people are are um, dropping away from religion, you know, because it doesn't suit them anymore. And more people are becoming, uh, you could say, more conscious of the, of themselves as spiritual be beings in human embodiments, and therefore um, that's causing a distinction between organized religion and spirituality. So there is a difference, right? Spirituality takes the concept of God from being outside of ourselves and puts it back as something that is within ourselves and all around us. Everything is divine. Everything is sacred, right? When you come to that realization, your, your mental, uh, con your, your mind focuses, your mind shifts. You could say your focus begins to shift to uh, the concept of universal awareness. Everything is sacred. And then you begin to act differently. You know, you begin to um, become more, embodied in who you really are as a divine being in human form. And, and that's why religion is failing now. So I, I've come to uncover that Marduk, also known as Amun-Ra, is not Ra, all right, the sun god. Those are two different entities. He just hijacked it. And that's why some people are calling Ra the bad guy. When Ra, in essence, the original Ra is no other than yeah. the sun, the sun that decides to incarnate into human form in order to usher in a golden age you know so I, I also wanted to make that distinction because there's people in the disclosure community who who have no clue of who's who in ancient times you know they talk about the Anunnakis but everything's been inverted you know mm -hmm. Every, like all, all the tablets were inverted by Marduk by the way and guess who the Christians guess how, who, uh, how what what name the Christians gave Marduk you're not going to believe this Satan. <laughs> so basically, Christianity has been worshiping Satan yeah. under the name of Amun Ra, under the name of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different terminologies that they use. Yeah. That's, that's so weird because uh, I've studied a lot of ancient Egypt and mythology and all of that kind of stuff. And I wrote a whole movie script about that. And my perception of Amun Ra was never that it was bad you know i think that in the spiritual community that you're referring to there's people that are saying that that's like marduk and all of these other you know entities or whatever uh bad people you know or bad um and was it bad gods or whatnot 
So these are those those are bad the the ones that are like Sumerian and all of that kind of stuff. But the ancient Egypt one, uh, when it comes to just reading that off of everything and like what I what I know is true is basically I'm a raw is and bad. And even Seth, he's the protector of the whole universe. But because of all of the altercations that happen between and between them all within the mythology or whatnot, uh, he be- became like portrayed as bad. But he's ultimately got the job as p- the protector of the universe, you know? So I don't know. Is what? He- well, which one, Seth or Seth? So Seth. So, so Seth is... Oh, there's balloons. What is going on? Is it your birthday? Or <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Like, see, look, if I put my thumbs up, it's going to give you a thumbs up. See? <laughs> so if I do this, let's see what happens. Oh. I don't know. Mine is undoing that. <laughs> no, it's not your birthday. No, your no, birthday? <laughs> my birthday. I don't know why you got the <laughs> so you're, you're, so you're, I know. And then moon and which you said is like to pray to like a man or whatever and then a moon and then a moon raw so they're like united you know because uh, a moon was the original like the basic one in ancient egypt like that basically was god the hidden one you know and then they put it together with a moon raw because the raw was basically the the sun god and it was uh the the falcon god you know so they put all of them together to make it into the official like thing or whatever so like everybody could just pray to that what i understand was the bad thing within the ancient egypt was uh uh when they try to have have everyone not like um worship Ra, right Mm -hmm. They weren't trying to have anyone worship Ra and Amun Ra, and it was basically the, um, what's his name? Uh, I think it was called Aten. So um, Akhenaten came and he was like, when Nefertiti said, oh, now we're going to get rid of this ancient belief that everybody believed in and was working for everyone, right? And at that time, it was also before that, uh, it was peaceful and all of that kind of stuff. And then there's all these leaders that came after that, that was just abusing their power and all of those kind of things. And um, uh, Akhenaten said, oh, now we're going to all uh, praise Aten, right? So he made up this whole thing and Aten was to worship him technically, you Wasn't know? Ak- so Also Moses though? What? Akhenaten Moses? I don't know who Akhenaten them was but as i heard before in like a comparison in the ancient egypt compared to the bible and the biblical figures was that um horus was jesus and then isis was mary and um i think osiris was um Abraham or something i don't know i can't remember but it was something like that but um <laughs> i was just like what was it again but um that's what i know as far as like comparison but i don't know the rest of who's who and what's what when it comes to the bible compared to the egyptian mythology but i know that everybody was praying to amen which was a moon you know uh and that's the hidden one which means right. God, right? Which, which is the the consciousness of our sun the sun right yeah, yeah. Make- so, uh, I- uh, but then there's like these AI spiritual pages they're kind of saying all these other things and I'm like what this this makes no sense it doesn't even align to actual history of what happened um, as far as like mythology and what happened in the hieroglyphs you know so if you read the hieroglyphs it has very extensive descriptions of how these ancient Egyptian gods came about and what happened and, you know, that kind of thing. And then they come up with all these other theories that I never even heard of about that doesn't even say in the, in the ancient, you know, text or anything like that. So I don't know. I don't know what, what, what that 
comes to make uh, the whole thing, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking in different languages, you know. But what we do know is that uh, there was a time where there was a golden age in Egypt, and it was ruled by the benevolent gods, who were the watchers, who were the guardians of the earth. Would you, would you agree that that was Isis and Osiris? What, the benevolent gods? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I think that, um, I don't even know what you mean when you say benevolent gods. Oh, benevolent means like uh, the, the righteous ones, the ones that were protectors okay. of our realm. I don't know. English is only my third language, so sure. stay with me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, Horus uh, and Isis were, were good, good mm -hmm. gods. I think most of them are good guards gods they were good in their own way and they had they all had their own purpose you know there is some that was like only for fertility or mostly for fertility or you know love and relationships and there's some that were um you know like anubis for instance uh, he was uh the the god of the underworld which people would relate that to something bad, but really he was the protector of lost souls and children, you know? So I think there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to that. And I don't think that they were looking at it as like, uh, these are bad gods and, you know, they all had their own purpose for certain things, you know? So like, um, like Sobek, for instance, was for the water and he was the crocodile one, right? So that they had their own purpose. Uh, Isis um, is also for like love relationships and Hathor was also that and um, and like fertility. And also they, they did a lot of things uh, to, you know, make the ground fertile right so they wanted to have crops and stuff like that so when they prayed to Amun and Amun Ra basically together that was to have a uh, dark or black soil so that it will be fertile for their crops to like you know uh, grow whatever they wanted to grow at the time so that was a lot of the things like getting the the nature involved and like for instance, Newt uh, was for the sky, and that's like the stars. They're, they all had their own purpose. That's my whole point. But I don't think that there were really bad, um, like, evil kind of characters in there. They just had their own purpose. But as far as I can understand with, like, the Sumerian and all of those, there were, like, some characters there that were really bad, you know? So that's something else I have to, like, research more about, but... This is what I understand of this so far, you know? <laughs> you probably know more than me because you've researched so much, and that's why I like talking to you because you have, like, um, another perspective, and I, I'm open to, you know, learning and seeing other points of views or whatever else is out there. I think it's interesting. And I also think more people should be like that because how are we going to ever understand each other if we don't understand other people's perspective or point of views or uh, whatever they believe in or whatnot. So I think, I think that's how we can all come together and make everything work out in the end. I totally agree. And it's just sad that they had to invert, you know, the ancient gods when they inverted all the records, um, they made them all appear to be evil when in actuality you had your good gods the protector, so then you had your evil gods. And then if you want to get technical, you know, a lot of these mythologies um, are very integrated. Yeah. So really what they were is, according to my, my research, is they were extraterrestrials that came from other planets, from other star systems. And some had good intentions and some had bad intentions, you know. And there is evidence in all the ancient records that there was aerial wars between good angels, or whether you want to call them gods or ETs, and bad ones, for control of the planet, of course. And then we do know that the negative ones, the bad ones, eventually won one of the wars, and that's the reason why our world fell into the Dark Ages, you know. So we could also say that when the good gods were in power, we had golden ages. We Everything was flourishing, you know. Um, and then when the bad gods were in power, everything kind of went into a state of decline you know where everything was just back to um struggling you know where humanity fell from consciousness right from it being 
a multi-dimensional person to a, you know, re reducing us down to barbarians, right? We're, we're just like a little bit smarter than the Neanderthals or the primitives. Yeah. That's a different story. <laughs> you know, for, um, for those that haven't read my book, I mean, a lot of these stories uh, that are depicted in ancient history or that was suppressed, I actually bring it back to life and I connect with the galactic history and how it's really the battle between the negative ETs that come from Orion and the positive ETs that come from Lyra. And of course, all the other star systems uh, that were in, involved in this, you know, galactic battle that took place, like Star Wars, you know, <laughs> the ancient battles, right? The real Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I totally agree. No, but that's, um, that's so crazy, though. Like, uh, so you think basically Amon Ra was a bad guy? No, I think Amon Ra was the good guy. Oh. I think the record converted it to make him look like a bad guy. Oh. Uh, so who would do that? Like, like I, I don't understand. Why, what's the point of that? Well, they would do that to basically, yeah, like I think you said, to hijack the timeline or something like that, right? The original Egyptian gods that were also known as the Natura were actually benevolent. They were benevolent means like they were righteous, they were good. They were guardians of the evolving humans. But then the evil ETs came along in the form of the reptilians. Those were the bad guys, by the way. So the reptilians hijacked everything to make Amun-Ra look like he was evil, to make, uh, you know, the Egyptian gods look evil. But everything was inverted, you know? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So that makes sense also with, it's so weird because there's so many parallels with all of the ancient gods, uh, like in mythology, and all of the religions, right? But then all of the religions say that those are the bad guys. And then, so it's kind of becomes like, what is going on here? Everybody's like that spider meme, a Spider-Man meme where they're pointing at each other, you know? Like, it's like, who's who? What's what? You know? So that makes sense. So who would you say in the public eye is a reptilian then? In the public eye? All those politicians in power and uh, a lot of the celebrities, by the way. Okay, but who? Like, give me some names. Give you some names here on social media? <laughs> uh, we, we do know that... Uh, has been seen to shapeshift her eyes or, or vertical. Um, that's just one of them, you know. Um, I don't know so much about Obama. I think Obama was more of a puppet. But uh, the Bushes, you know, the Bushes that were both Bushes who became presidents, also very, very reptilian. Um, in fact, most of the presidents, with the exception of Kennedy, Reagan, and of course, you know, T-R-U-M-P, and um, who else, who else? Yeah, most of the presidents have been, and Eisenhower, Eisenhower wasn't reptilian, but all of the presidents have had somewhat of a high concentration of reptilian genetics. Now, as far as like celebrities, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Kevin Spacey is, is a hardcore reptile in human form. Um, I think Lady Gaga, just, I'm just throwing you know names out there. This is all disclaimery, by the way. You guys can do your own research. It's just for entertainment purposes, <laughs> um, uh, I think Madonna is is reptilian. That's why she was able to rise into like a high level of fame. Uh, um, some people I've seen some videos of uh, what's his name, uh, not Ashton Kutcher. Um, uh, uh, just of his eyes, you know, turning into vertical, like vertical slit, where he shape-shifted a little bit. So that's just to give you a name of a few, you know. So, I mean, but if I, then again... Something with the eye, or is it like... Uh, you can see it in their eyes. Their eyes just become vertical. That's when you know that they're reptilian. You can talk to someone, and then they're like, like, start, like, getting weird. So... If I like focus on looking at someone's eyes the whole time, would they switch in front of me like that? Like, if you if you ha are intuitive, if, if you have um, like like a heightened sense of a uh, of psychic awareness, yes, you'll be able to see it for who they really are. But what about like like so when people say like reptilian, do they like shed their skin at night? Like how does that work so people understand it? Like I mean I wonder too, like if they go like in a closet and they're like Ugh, you know <laughs> I, they probably 
the the high level families like you know like the Rothschilds perhaps. That, but as far as like the people in in office, the people that are like the public puppets, um, they're in human form, but they do have a you know more of a concentration of reptilian DNA than the rest of us. But get this, uh, every human on the earth has at least 10% of reptilian in them because of the our complex, the primitive brain. We all have that. So I have it too. You have it? We, we all have it? Fortunately, we, we, we are a hybrid race. We have a little bit of reptilian. We're also mammalian and, you know, other ET races. We're, we're a combination of different races put into one specimen. But yeah, every single person... Wait, Jose. <laughs> between us and those that have like say 50 yeah. percent reptilian genetics is that those are the people that have been in power for the last five thousand mm -hmm. years they come from babylon yeah you know that's that's where they originated that's where they their cradle of power arose from was babylon yeah uh the rest of us you know we we only have like 10 or less percentage it's called the art complex or, or or the primitive brain which is also the 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 brain that causes us to fight and flight you know it, it's it's like our our uh or are the the part of ourselves that that makes us aggressive you know so people that are that have a temper issue that are very aggressive uh perhaps they're just not controlling your reptilian brain you know yeah you know people so are not nar narcissist you know a lot of these narcissistic uh humans are are letting their lower brain take over them which is the reptilian brain but we could control that. We could actually control the reptilian brain by, by what? By spiritual work, by meditation, by becoming more of service to others. Mm, okay. So is it possible that like a full-blown reptilian can become good or is it like they're done? Yeah. In fact, throughout the Galactic Wars, about 3% of the reptilians decided to rebel against the expanding Orion Empire, and they just kind of wanted their own freedoms. They wanted to be liberated from that conquest. And some of them even joined forces with the, you know, the guardian races. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, you know, not all reptilians are evil. You know, there's a small percentage of them that are actually uh, good, you know, that decided to defect from the dark side to become part of the light, you know. They decided to embed themselves in the principles of Christ consciousness, in other words. So, like Let's say if someone is a full-blown reptilian and they just decided, like, to ded de dedicate their life to uh, helping others, um, then then they will be good. Like, what happens to them after if they decide to be good? Well, what happens is that they, they overcame their uh, art complex, which is the lower brain, which is the reptilian brain. We all have that. And what they do is they begin to activate DNA or codons that are more angelic-oriented. Because we all also have the angelic uh, genetics, which is what I call in my book the uh, crystalline matrix DNA, which is 96% of our untapped potential. It's celestial genetics. So when we, as we change mentally and we shift our consciousness towards service to others and helping others, then we literally begin to activate those parts of our genes that are associated with the angels or the angelics or the celestials. Got it. Well, that's interesting. Oh, so this is another thing I wanted to ask you, because uh, this is my perception of what's going on with the whole like image based sexual abuse and to victims that this happens to. And even like uh, children, women, any men, anybody that ever been like sexually abused or had that kind of, um, you know, been attacked in that area. Right. So um, the way I saw it, I was uh, like, let's say, for instance, somebody's been sexually abused or they're a victim of image based sexual abuse. It's like they're getting their sexual energy stolen, right? Which is the most powerful energy. So, isn't that going with, I think it's the sacral uh, chakra, right? So, it goes with the sacral chakra. But if that gets imbalanced, then all of the other chakras kind of also tune out like for instance uh the throat chakra what is that called the is it throat chakra yeah the throat yeah. chakra which is this so the yeah. chakra and like the heart and like all of these other areas of your body they all go kind of out of balance right when it comes to like the spiritual stuff and then when that happens the person is completely unaligned but then the person who did this to the the other one right the victim 
they're basically stealing all of their energy, right? Doesn't it? It's like that, like where they steal all the energy, then they get all of the good feelings and the their feelings feel better and, you know, they feel more aligned or something. And then the person that this happens to, they're completely like unaligned. So one of the best things that someone that had that happen to them, I think will be to give all that back and kind of um, align all of their chakras again or something. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm trying to think of like spiritual terms (laughs) of what I'm trying to say, but I think you get it. I think I understand what you're saying. You're saying that the the person that they're doing this to is the victim. They, in a way it depletes their energy. Whereas the person, the perpetrator, is increasing yeah. in energy, right? Yes. Uh, that's that's what we call the uh, the narcissist empath relationship. You know, uh, the reptilian human relationship. You know, uh, one of the things that I've come to uncover is that one of the that when the reptilians were attacking the original human world in Lyra, five hundred and sixty million years ago, um, they discovered this idea of louche, where they were feeding off their suffering. So yeah, in a way that that was like a drug for them where they were just like amplified, you know, their energy levels would go high whenever they tortured humans. And um, and this is something that has been repeated over and over throughout, you know, our world and stuff. Uh, The elites, the elites, obviously, you know, what they have been doing to children, right? In the underground, of course, we we all know about Andro. I don't want to say that name, but they have been harvesting their energy because of the fact that they use that energy to co-create, they use that energy to amplify themselves and to uh, be, get high. They get high off of the suffering of humans, unfortunately. So, um, you know, that that's something that has continued even up until today, unfortunately, you know. And that's why I want to bring awareness to people, you know, so that we could stop, so that we could become a sovereign, you know, and independently... Um, powerful you know by what by disconnecting ourselves with those that are just there to leech off of us or suck our energy and one of the best ways to keep your power is by grounding grounding yourself um doing daily devotion to god the higher power whatever you want to call it um through prayer and meditation every day establish 20 to 30 minutes a day in solitude with the divine and that's one of the ways that we actually begin to put a shield of protection around us, um, preventing these negative energies from from harnessing us or negative people. Because sometimes we attract negative people. Yeah. That and they and they will feed off our energy. So we have to be very careful. Yeah, and as far as like if somebody is, for instance, a victim of image based sexual abuse, and it's like something that technically never really ends until you have help with like takedown services and all that which I provide on my nonprofit but like let's say somebody's getting abused every single day they're getting bullied harassed stalked um you know and they're not they're just an everyday person they go to school you know just having a regular life and then it becomes very hard for this person to just try to ground themselves and stay, you know, like normal, have a normal, healthy life. What does someone like that do in in spiritual terms? Uh, what do you, what do you, what's your advice on that? For like a child that's been exploited? A child or a woman or a man. There's someone that's having a really hard time that, you know, they keep getting reminded of this because even for me, for instance, like, Every day, it was like somebody would say, I mean, even now, probably in the, I haven't even looked at the the comments, but I'm pretty sure there's there's trolls that show up and they say, oh my God, you know, you did this, oh, you know? <laughs> so they're probably, you know, doing this to these poor children or women or men, anyone that has, you know, a normal life. They would just want to exist and be happy, right? So what what does someone like that do to ground themselves when it's like a constant reminder and people online are bullying them? They go to work, they get bullied and harassed and stalked about it, you know? They might spend a lot of money to try to get the stuff taken down and it never ends. Now they can't get a job, they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't get relationships, they can't make friends. Uh, I mean, this is something that affects 
people on a way larger scale uh, than anyone can imagine. Like if you get abused, for instance, it's something that's horrifying, but it stays in your, you know, memory and, um, you know, it's really hard to move on from that. But now when that memory is recorded and posted online for everybody to see your trauma every single day, every minute of the day, it's just like, what does someone like that do as far as spiritual terms to kind of ground themselves or, I mean, grounding is one thing, but there's got to be something more they could do, right? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> like, like, go come down, like, you know, <laughs> we need help. <laughs> right. yeah. Of course, first thing that they have to do is set boundaries. Yeah. Cut off all those people that are no longer serving you, that are, you know, feeding off your energy, that are per putting you down, that are, you know, uh, like um, cancerous cells yeah. in your life, you know? You've got to set boundaries. And if you're in a work environment where people are bullying you, uh, get a new job. You know, you, you have to set boundaries. That's the first thing you have to do. As far as, like, people who have been exploited, as far as, like, putting their pictures on the Internet and stuff, get involved. Like you, you went out there and you did something about it. You brought this to the attention of the Supreme Court, not the Supreme Court, but the judges. You know yeah. what I mean? Was it the Supreme Court? It was a Congress. So basically. It, it was Capitol Hill. I did the whole thing. But then I went back home and then had several layers of this bill, the PROTECT Act, and then a bunch of people collabed on it and it finally got introduced federally. But then I took that one, created a, a state bill. So I'm uh, tackling this like million different ways. And then there's other people in other countries now that are doing their, that what they can over there in their countries. So, yeah. So then I have over those too but yeah get involved like volunteer yeah. and really just be picky as to who you choose to align yourself with mm -hmm. you know that's the best way to do it and and i hate to say this but a lot of the times what happens to us was pre-contractual in other words our soul before incarnated already agreed that we were going to go through this okay for whatever reason that's just the way everything works um but you could also get out of that contract yeah. by boundaries, by making a change now, by stepping away from people that are there to, you know, uh, abuse you. you know? Yeah. And what about, like, if it's on social media? Do they just, like, delete their socials and just leave it out? Or what, what's your advice on that? If you're being bullied on social media, block people. Block yeah. people. That's the best thing to do. You don't necessarily have to take down your social media because – because of a few individuals, you know, just yeah. block those individuals if you guys have to, you know, you know, you, you, you are the captain of your own ship, right? You decide who you associate with and who you not associate with, who you share your energy with and who you not share your energy with. And everybody has that, that power, you know, it's called free will. Yeah. So I, I love it. And like, for me, I always tell people that there's no shame in what happened to them. It's the person that is the perpetrator that caused the pain. That's that's where all the focus and energy should be going towards on the negative kind of stuff, right? So there's no shame in what they did to take back their own power and to, you know, tell the truth, to share their stories, Um the more I, I didn't even know this, I isolated myself for years and I didn't share my story for eight years. But once I shared it, I was like, wow, I should have done this way sooner. Why, why did I wait so long? So I think, you know, the bullying and the harassment on all those people that are constantly, you know, there to put you down, they're making you feel like that. Like you did something wrong. There's shame. You, you, the one, you're the one that has all this shame and, you know, it's this big scandal or something like that. Right. But that's basically them projecting their issues on you so that you feel that, and then you won't tell the truth about them. Right. So once you share your own story and tell the truth, you're removing all of their power over, you know, what you may uh, be going through. Or even in your head, there's sometimes like these mental blocks in our head that we don't even realize that these people are putting on us, you know. So um, I think it's good that people take their power back and fight back. And, you know, I could be exposing all of the influencers that are doing this to me, but I know that within time, all of that 
is going to get revealed. I don't need to make my hands dirty and like do the same thing that they did to me, to them. That's something that's going to be exposed anyways. You know, kind of like how the Epstein is and all of these things are all coming out now. Even like that guy, Cat Williams, he's like sharing all these stories about a bunch of people. And I'm like, wow, that's this one is true. And that one is true. And this is that, you know, and I'm like, wow, this guy's he's taking his power back, you know? So it's cool. I love it. Yes. Justice is coming, my friend. Yes. I mean, <laughs> all those people that were perpetrators, they're all going to yes. be exposed. Every single, you know, and, and um, what is the best way where people could reach you? You say you have a yes. foundation. What's the name of your foundation? So my fa- foundation's name is Foundation Ra, R-A, which means the sun, and that's all of the good, positive things, bringing the light to the world, and the sunshine, and warmth, and faith, and, you know, all of these, uh, on hope, you know, good things. My name's, my name means North Star, so I want it to be, you know, the sun, and then the star, and eventually maybe have something called Luna, or something, so that was the, the ideal uh, thing that I want to do and Foundation Raw has all of the resources, free takedown services, there's therapy, there's, uh, I want to do like a spiritual meditation or something like that, like where people can meditate or learn how to ground themselves, that would be cool too. And um, uh, there's law enforcement that I can vouch for that isn't going to do the victim blaming and the shaming. Um, there's lawyers that's also that I can vouch for that not going to do that too. And which is a lot of the problems. Like even when people go to law enforcement, they can't really get help the way they need to be helped. And instead they get like a secondary trauma where they're not believed. They get shamed. Well, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why did you talk to that guy? You should have known better. You know, it's just, it's just unnecessary. So again, the attention should go to the perpetrators, not on the victims. So um, the law enforcement the detectives, uh, it, it show you how to know your rights, whether it's within the U.S. or in other countries. So it has all of the extortion laws, all of the revenge porn laws, deep fake, uh, AI laws. There's a few states that already implemented that, which is good. It's somewhat good. And uh, internationally, there's maybe five or six countries so far that uh, have some kind of AI regulation. So um, you can go there and find out basically everything that you need to know. And then if anybody wants to volunteer, get involved, you can donate. I mean, all of the stuff that I've done so far is, you know, I funded everything, which was my savings. And I, I don't have any more savings. So um this is all done without any funding from anyone so if i did all this on my own imagine what i could do with funding right so um another thing that people don't know is a lot of these non-profits they're getting all this funding and they're not using it correctly but if they want to donate, they should focus on survivor-led nonprofits, which are usually people that actually would care and this is 100% survivor-led. I'm a survivor, and everybody that's volunteering is a survivor, too. So, um, or else you can find me at my socials. It's at Udos, U-L-D-O-U-Z. And uh, what about you, Ishmael? <laughs> well, uh, find dimensions. Uh, I live in multiple yeah. realities. <laughs> no, no to, to be concrete and, and uh, down here on <laughs> Uh, find me on my social media, The Real Ishmael Perez. I decided to call myself The Real Ishmael Perez because I have a lot of fake accounts that are trying to be me. And yes, you'll just, I'm trying to get verified. It's so hard when you have like so many people that are like posing to be me. Um, you could also find my book, Our Cosmic Origin, on Amazon. Just t- type in Our Cosmic Origin. It's a revised revision, exploring the galactic history, the cosmic uh, relationship to the Earth and the, the multiverse as well as metaphysical knowledge and much more. And then, um, so, oh, and by the way, uh, if you guys want to watch my live tonight, I'm going to be revealing the 12 universes and how we're part of the 12 universe. So I'm going to be going over that. I'm going to be talking about the 12 living universes. And you could find me on 
YouTube under The Real Ishmael Perez. Again, I have a lot of pirated channels, so just make sure you type The Real Ishmael Perez. I could always put the link here in the description on both ends. And um, for those that are attending the Conscious Live Expo next month, I will be speaking Saturday, the 10th, uh, from 10 o'clock to about 11.30, breaking down the entire cosmic structure of the 15-dimensional time matrix, exploring advanced civilizations of different races, and the cosmic war with AI. And what else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. That's it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm excited about it too. Well, like uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna be speaking there, but <laughs> this sounds like fun. I might come there and, and cheer you on. But Ishmael, <laughs> <laughs> you want me to make a sign? <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, who is this weirdo? <laughs> like, kick her out. <laughs> <laughs> no it's fun i love it but you're smiling a lot more i remember we did like an interview a while back and you were so serious and remember there was this crazy fly all around me and i killed it and then it just like woke up and kept going again that was weird <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you were so serious you were like I'm like smile <laughs> <laughs> but now you're smiling a lot i like it it's good thank you Appreciate that. So what do you? All right. Well, now <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, we're going to end the live now. Thank you oh. so much for being here. All of like 128 people. I don't even know how many people are in the live, but I think it was fluctuating. Uh, so thank you all for watching it. And I'm going to go ahead and save this and hit you as a collaborator for those that want to watch the replay. that couldn't make it at this time. With that in mind, may the God Force be with you all, and we'll see you guys at another time. Bye.